Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. Permit me to do a spoiler and say that we will be spoiling you on this edition with our usual quality menu. I will be serving up the first dish by addressing the matter that is at the heart of our nation's fragmentation. No, not corruption, but our, our lost innocence. One man's loss is another man's gain. Liberals, on the other hand, resist an advancement of another kind as he takes on the matter what he calls immunity for impunity. Uche continues on this sober note by asking, what is the value of Nigeria's life, Nigerian's life? Priceless would be my response, but I take she isn't only asking me. Treasure is back, and this time she draws an interesting connection between spousal violence and financial independence for women. Hmm. This one I just have to hear. Ekene wraps up our banquet by taking us back to our roots. We're talking Wazobia here. So much to come. We we'll better get started after the break. Never let the childlike heart vanish, innocence of which has been taught to you to flourish. That's a quote by Justina J. Robello, regaining our lost innocence. My friend Praise Fowewe says, the problem of the world is an adult and the solution is a child. Nigeria today walks at the precipice of disintegration. We have become so fragmented and divided along religious and ethnic lines, and it's so heartbreaking to see we have abandoned the communal way we lived in the past. Today, we are a society of silos, living only within our high walls and barricades. There's so much distrust, mutual suspicion and fear, so much so that even noble efforts of one region to tackle insecurity issues that should ordinarily be commended elicited so much rancor and outcry simply because they do not trust each other. But the truth is, we have not always been like this. Nigerians once lived like good neighbors within a community that is based on mutual respect for our differences. I remember when we celebrate Christmas with our friends, even when we're Muslims, the time when we will go to the bazaar with our Catholic friends with the full knowledge and permission of our parents, even as Muslims. Those were the days of innocence, when all you see in a person is his or her humanity, not his tribe or the way he or she worships his creator. So what went wrong? What happened to our innocence? The same politicians that stoke ethnic divisions to remain relevant politically do not remember or recognize tribal or religious differences when they share their loot. Last year, Amcon, that is the asset management company of Nigeria, released a list of debtors. 20 debtors owe 67% of, of the five trillion debt accrued. What is even more interesting is the composition of the debtors. What you observe is the perfect camaraderie among the ruling class. We must reopen our hearts to one another. We must regain our lost innocence. We must learn to forgive easily, as children do. And we must regain our humanity, because great is a human who has not lost his childlike heart. I was quite touched by your advocacy when I, <coughs> when I came across it, because I said, you know, there's something very simple and yet very poignant about it. Um, recently, I was listening to a radio discussion around the Almagiri system. And what made me happy, though, even though you had people speaking very frankly about their distrust for the North, and you, you could hear a lot of things that people hadn't been able to say in public. They were finally able to say, oh, these people are holding us back. But then even better was that you had some Northern people who were educated who came on and said, look, let's enlighten you as to you know, the real situation on the ground. So you actually, so what I'm proposing 
is open dialogue. Yes, you know, the um, elite, as you pointed out, have manipulated our differences. Mm -hmm. But if people begin to talk, when you now have... So, because stereotypes only flourish when you don't have conversations going. But if someone comes to you and says, look, you have a, a northern and you engage with them like you went with your Catholic neighbors, mm -hmm. then you, you are less likely to believe that they have two horns on their head. And, you know, because you know, you know someone from the north. So this is what the NYSC and some of these federal unity schools we're trying to deal with. But now we, there's so much fear, there's so much every man for himself that people don't remember the human being anymore. But that conversation I heard reignited re in me that there's hope. People can have more conversations around the issues, especially those thorny issues that people run away from, religion and tribalism. Let's talk about them. Is it really meant to divide us? Can we, can we not have complementary you know, tribal relationships. Uh, you know, that's where... Yeah, I'm, I'm itching to, to say something. Please yeah. say it. <laughs> you, you find Scratch out that these problems uh, <clears throat> were not created by, by us, even if we talk about them. If the right people who ought to talk about them are not talking about them, people will always say I blame politicians. Yes, because they found the embers of this division. In 2015, after the election, you expected the president after election to say, look, now I'm the president of everybody. Since he said, I belong to nobody and I belong to everybody. The moment he came with that message of, you don't expect me to treat mm. the 97% the same way I would treat the 5%. The 5 that was a statement of division. And then his appointment came. They were all skewed towards one direction. Yes, some people that lost out will look at those areas and say, yes. Look at. And then, that also didn't help matters. His advisors, media advisor, if you complain, they say you're a willer. Mm -hmm. Genuine complaints. And, and so, thought this also further divided us. But like Sedu had said, when they gather, look at um, yes, Ribadu's uh, uh, son's uh, wedding. Mm. Right. All of them were there. Look at um, uh, the governor of Akwaibom State's uh, Moses mother, father's burial. Now. They all were there. And now, coupled with the insecurity, Ordinarily, I would love to send my child to Bauchi to go to school, but I can't do that in all honesty because I'll be putting that child at risk. I wouldn't want to do it, even no matter how much I love to be a Nigerian. My last advocate, I dressed like an Arab, and you know, somebody told me, oh, why are you pandering towards the knots? And I said, you saw the video, you didn't see any message there, your it own is impressive. pandering towards the north. When I dressed like an Igbo man like you, I wasn't pandering towards the, the, south, the south. When I dressed like a Benue man, I wasn't pandering towards uh, the you Benue people. You haven't done your bad dress yet. Yo, I did. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and here you are, these are the message that these people want to push down our truth, so that the more divided we are, the more they continually, you know, rule I mean, over us. divide and rule thing. Uh, and, and, and the only way it can be solved is for them, them, not we, you no matter how much you talk about it, it's for them to sit down and say, look, this will not help us. Like, and then let like, their followers also Like the Emir of Kanu has started to talk yeah. about. Yeah. But I mean, the other problem is, like we, we all know, when the rich class or the elites, you know, we don't, that, that, the whole thing about religion and uh, all that doesn't really come into play. You see them hanging money out like we said. Money is the bond. Yeah, money <laughs> is the bond. So it's really the, you know, the lower classes or the uneducated people that, you know, hold on to this whole religious, uh, you know, what would you call it, division. And then they use it to decide who they want to fraternize with. Some educated people talk. Some, uh, yes, some do, but it, it is mainly, and, and when there's, so when there's no history being taught in schools so that we are able to like respect each other's culture, respect each other's religion and so on and so forth, all they're going to, they're just going to hear these politicians saying whatever they're, they're saying and they're going to take sides. So I think like Libra said, we can discuss it all we want, but it is um, leading by example that will make the change. Now, if, um, Buhari comes out and now says, you know what, Nigeria is for all, forget all these things. Like, he should have done that in his new cabinet. He should have reshuffled, he should have brought in, made it more inclusive. But he still chose not to. I mean, when you sit around and you see all the service chiefs are uh, northern, what does that tell you? No, you're right. I mean, clearly there's a... But I'm, I'm still saying that because I'm not a fan for wait till. Of course they ought to, and of course that would be the quicker way to get things done. But whilst we're still waiting to hear from them, we can't let ourselves be manipulated. Well, you know, you're not I understand zombie. what you're saying. Is, <coughs> like John C. Maxwell says, everything rises and falls on leadership. On leadership. Mm -hmm. You're the leader, and you're leading a divided people. 
The onus is on you to unite them. And then the onus is on you and your lieutenant to find out <clears throat> what are those factors, what are the things that are dividing your people and tackle from the roots. No, but he's saying that that's not in their interest. They're not interested in uniting. Yeah, but, yeah, so maybe right. we need to take the onus and vote in the right people who have our unity as I agree with you. But you can't sit back and yeah. keep passing the box to people who clearly don't care to do what you're saying. It's just like, you know, you, you just, just like... I think no, uh, fair enough. Speaking, we're, we're, we're also speaking to them. Uh, when I was writing this advocacy, it, it was, you know, the thought around a child, you know, who... That they didn't know has anything. empathy, mm -hmm. yeah. no jealousy, no all those vices that divide us today. Yeah. We need to, you know, take introspect and take yeah. take well, a cue from them. Yeah. But you I know? also think that it the fellowship us. also have yeah, um, a great role to yeah, play. Yeah. No, but, but, but frankly, listening to listening to you, I you took me back to my childhood. Exactly, it's mm -hmm. true. It, you're a Muslim, I'm, it's Christmas, I'm sharing yeah. plates of yeah. food with you where your mom is telling you go and give to this and give to that and you get there, they give you money as mm -hmm. well. As you I know. Growing up, we roast the ram for salah. So what, what happened? What changed? You know, so yeah. Did, did I, I, we become more day. religious? Did we was, become, what, what changed? I, there was, so no, we are, we, are, we are more no, no, religious I, I think now. our we're children are still... Religious. But less godly. Our, 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 less children are still, <laughs> our children are still like that. Like I know that my child is still very innocent and all of that. But he will get to a certain point the where it will now be made, as, yeah, yeah. made no, known to him. That is a, in yeah. So what is like socialization we coming from? Yeah, like for schools, instance, I'll tell you, homes. his school, what I like about his school is though he's an evil boy, he is made to learn Yoruba. You know, that already will make him think, oh, yes, I'm, I'm you know, I'm well, including other people's other Yeah, he'll appreciate that. Really. T t quickly, um, before I round up on this, uh, you find <laughs> out that the, <laughs> the, the average, you know, Nigerian see Boko Haram as a Muslim thing. Boko Haram is not Islamic. And I expect our leaders to let us... What is the National Orientation Agency uh, doing? You took that question Absolutely out of my mouth. Sense. You know, let people know this is on Islamic. Some people bought that idea initially, thinking and they that. Sold you, you know, so the these single are some story. of the, 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 the some of the issues. The well, <clears throat> so, you, so you think a loss of innocence is bad? Then I'll be diagnosing another cancerous tumor after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they would like. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.